We're back with the bigger picture. Head noise in three, two. We've all experienced that annoying ringing in our ears at one time or another. It usually just lasts a few seconds. But imagine if that ringing never went away. How could you function? Well, unbelievably, that's the case for thousands of Canadians. It can even drive some people to suicide. Our Alex Mihailovich investigates the unbearable head noise that plagues so many people, including him. Most people enjoy the soothing sounds of a walk in the garden. But for Elizabeth Ayres, the natural din can't drown out the monster in her head. Many people have a panic reaction when they first get it. They find it extremely upsetting in the highest degree. For 30 years, Ayres has lived with this. Like 360,000 other Canadians, she has tinnitus, an incurable noise in the ears that can sound like anything from a low hum to a high-pitched ringing. And for many, it never stops. Dr. Vincent Lin, an ear, nose and throat specialist at Toronto's Sunnybrook Hospital, explains. The inner ear contains a very complex array of nerves and it's probably the damage to this, this nerve or the hair cells within the nerve that uh, cause tinnitus. Tinnitus can be caused by many factors including stress, the use of some medications including aspirin, jaw problems and even tumors. But in most cases, the nerve damage is due to noise. Just ask any one of these rock stars. Neil Young, Pete Townsend, Eric Clapton, Cher, Bono, Phil Collins, Ozzy Osbourne, and a slew of others who all have tinnitus. But you don't have to be a rocker to get it. All kinds of average Canadians who experience above average noise at their jobs can develop this condition. From factory workers to road workers. But there are some places where employees and patrons alike are the most susceptible. Like a growing number of people, I have tinnitus from going to too many nightclubs. For the past 10 years, I've heard these sounds 24-7. Dave Francois is a night manager at Grace O'Malley's, a pub in Toronto. For him, the ringing started six years ago. Did it freak you out? It did, it certainly did, especially like when you're trying to sleep after a long night. And that ringing just sends you like in, insane. A drill to the head would have probably been a lot easier than having that ringing sound in my head constantly. Like most tinnitus sufferers, Dave eventually learned to live with it. But for others, the noise can be too much to handle. You may have seen It's All Gone Pete Tong, a movie based on a true story about a popular DJ who was severely affected by tinnitus and eventually hearing loss. Sorry for the spoiler, he makes it through his ordeal, but there are others who don't. There have been a few men that I've got to know who have suicided, and they have thought of this a long time ahead, and they have felt the depression and the problems they've got into have made their lives uh, impossible. I know when I first got tinnitus, you freak right out. The anxiety levels are through the roof. You do get right. used to it with time. What would you say to people that, that just have experienced it for the first time? Well, it's very common. In fact, I think the, uh, the, the estimates are probably a little bit underestimated. I think a lot of people do have it, provided we're in the, in the right environment. The, the key is, is that tinnitus is, is common. It's not a life-threatening condition. It's, it's really an issue of your ability to adapt. So how do people adapt to this? Antidepressants help with the feelings of anxiety, and doctors suggest trying to mask the ringing with other sounds such as a radio or a television. There's also therapies that use sound to cancel out the noise. But the best way to deal with tinnitus is prevention. If you work in a loud place, or if you like to have a good time in loud places, there's one way to avoid tinnitus, and that's earplugs. Chris Taylor of Toronto's Grace O'Malley's is a 12-year veteran in the bar business. If people are going to be working in a bar on a regular basis, especially if they're exposed to the loudspeakers stage front, you really should look into wearing earplugs. You'll save the problems that uh, some of us are going through right now. Dr. Lin agrees. They do have earplugs now that are, are meant to just attenuate sound, so they don't actually 
um, suppress it a whole lot, but it, but it bring them down to a level where it's quite m much safer than what the levels currently are. So I have my plugs with me. Oh, do you? <laughs> okay. This is what I wear. So I have these right. musicians plugs that exactly. Were made. These are very good. So custom custom molded uh, plugs, um, and and they're meant to just attenuate the level of noise. So I think these are the way to go. I'm, unfortunately, they're not cheap. Actually, it's a couple of hundred bucks. I wish I spent a lot earlier, but convincing people to invest in hearing health means getting over your own vanity. But, uh, quite honestly, there's a lot of vainness. Like, you come out to a bar, you want to pick up chicks, you want to look as cool as you can. So wearing, an ear, wearing up earplugs is certainly not really part of um, the Friday night atmosphere. Elizabeth Ayers hopes that awareness of tinnitus will compel people to protect themselves. But with more and more clubs and bars pumping up the volume, she believes that those loud Friday nights will be the downfall of many. There's such a dominant fad that just seems to rule out common sense. Fashion takes over, doesn't it? it, it th people will follow it no matter what. After the break on 16 by 9. I feared this day and here we are. A team of doctors attempted to resuscitate him for a period of more than one hour and they were unsuccessful. Did you miss something? Watch our show 16 by 9 online at global16by9.com.